So wait, wait, wait. You're telling me the physical therapy profession is dead? Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you brought it up. So let's talk about it. Yeah, it's one hard one shot now the future be sure. What's up guys, my name is Casey Coleman, I'm a physical therapist and the co-founder of PrePT Grind and on this video we're going to be discussing, is the physical therapy profession dead? Should you be putting all your time and effort and resources into becoming a physical therapist or is it just a lost cause? Because at PrePT Grind, yes, we can help you get into physical therapy school without wasting time or money, but our bigger mission is to help make the physical therapy profession better, starting with the PrePTs. Because in 5, 7, 12, 17, 22 years, what the physical therapy profession looks like is going to be a direct result of what you guys do, or we do, or maybe even some physical therapy students are watching this video, or maybe even some new grads are. So the physical therapy profession is going to look like whatever we make it into. So with that said, are we going to be the ones to help push the profession forward and help the people who are making big changes and, and doing big things and making efforts to make it better? Are we going to help them push it to new heights and make it better? Because there are some people doing some great things out there. Or are we just going to be on the other side of helping the people who are complaining just kill it and bash it and then break it down and down and down until it is dead? So are we going to be the ones to help save it or the ones to help kill it? That's what I want you to think about throughout the whole video. So how I'm going to break this video up uh, into parts is with the cons of physical therapy, some potential solutions to those cons, and then we're going to be talking about the pros to physical therapy. So of course, we got the notebook here. So let's get right into it. The cons to physical therapy are basically kind of centered around money. So here are the cons. Student debt, potential lowball salaries, COVID-19, insurance changes, and of course, the question at the end of the cons, because of all that, is physical therapy dead? Now, before I get into the solutions, I understand that the solutions can be complex and everybody can't have the same solutions to all these problems. I get it's not that black and white, I'm not stupid, I'm not naive. Yes, I'm new to the profession, but I know how this works, okay? So before we go any further, I just had to make that clear. I do understand these potential solutions aren't going to be easy and they can be complex and they're not gonna happen overnight. But I feel that it's better to talk about some solutions rather than just complain and complain and complain about all the problems. Cause is that really gonna help? Now, we do need to bring light to the cons and light to the problems so that we can fix it, but not bring light to the problems so that we can just keep complaining about it. So I understand that we do need to talk about the problems and that's why this video is here. So let's get into some potential solutions. Number one, the kind I talked about was student debt. So what can possibly be some potential solutions? Well, for some, can some go to a lower cost physical therapy school? Yes, for many people you can. Now, is it gonna be maybe a little tougher to get into those schools? Are they gonna be in the prime location that you wanna to go to? Maybe, maybe not. But for a lot of people, if you do want to reduce that student debt, one way you can do that is by going to a lower cost physical therapy school. Now, do some people have situations where they can't go to that school or their GPAs don't allow it or they have a spouse has a stationary job somewhere? Yes. I do understand that, that's why we have multiple solutions, but for a vast majority of people, if student debt is a big con for you, you can potentially reduce that debt by going to a lower price physical therapy school. And if you wanna see where those schools are, you can go to ptschoolprobe.com, I'll put the link here, and the link is probably below in the description. Use pre-PT grind as a promo code and you can see the different prices of physical therapy school. So, that is one potential solution. Another one is scholarships. Are there a lot of scholarships out there? No. Are they harder to find? Yes. Is it going to feel like a full-time job looking for these scholarships and applying? But is it a potential solution? And can many more people do it than they think? Yes. Yes. So scholarships. The next side hustles. Can you bring in extra income, whether it's something like Uber or Instacart or Lyft 
or making YouTube videos about your hobbies or you know babysitting or whatever that is you can make money anywhere from your phone it is crazy at this time so can you do a side hustle to make some ex uh, some extra income as a pre PT a PT student and that could potentially follow you into your physical therapy career so that you can keep making that residual income even as a physical therapist yes you can is it gonna be easy is everyone going to do it no I understand that but it is a possible solution for many more people than they think. Then lastly, a plan around student debt. Are you just gonna be taking on this student debt without even thinking about it and not being responsible about it? I mean, that's not the best thing to do. But if you do have a plan around it and talk to some financial advisors or some student loan planners, and you know the difference between federal and private and federal is better for you or private's better for you, and you have a spouse to help you out or you're going to be working at a different setting that pays higher and do you basically do you have a plan around your student loans and around the student debt if you're going to take out a big chunk of student loans or you have to take out a high amount of student debt that is a potential solution have a plan so that's the solutions potential solutions to the first con next lowball salaries or potential lowball salary. So some solutions. Can you negotiate and do you even know how to negotiate? And I'm not just saying negotiate like, hey, I'm a DPT now, I have my doctorate of physical therapy, pay me $120,000 a year. You'll probably get laughed out the building. I'm just keeping real with you, especially if you're a new grad in an outpatient setting in a big city. I mean, we just have to be realistic here. However, if you talk and understand business and talk in business uh, business terms and talk on the level of the human resource director people and stuff like that and start talking about, well, I understand that if you pay me $75,000, $70,000, dollars a year, that you're not really spending that much money on me. You're spending more. If you're spending $70,000 on me, you still have to pay payroll taxes and health insurance and you have to pay for the internet and my laptop and you have to pay for marketing and the rents for the building that I'm working in. So I understand that part. However, I'm bringing in this much revenue by seeing these many patients. And if I can do that for the next six months, can we talk about a restructure or a market adjustment or whatever else goes into them uh, bumping up your salary and all that stuff basically can you speak their language and talk on their level instead of just saying pay me more because i'm here like no can you negotiate and do you know how to negotiate to get a higher salary to combat that con of lowball salaries so that's a potential solu uh, solution next you can go to a new location that will potentially pay you more so if you want to work in New York City or Miami or a big city or something like that and expect a super high salary by just working a nine to five, I mean, you might be disappointed, like I said, or can you go to a different location in a rural community or in a different city that will pay you that much? Or can you work overtime or PRN, meaning as needed, or have another part-time physical therapy job on the side if money is important to you? to combat that lower salary if you wanna stay in uh, a big city. Okay, so another location that could pay you more, you can think about that as a potential solution. Next, another solution, a new setting. So let's just say you wanna be in the outpatient setting, meaning like your normal clinic. Well, if money is important to you and fighting that kind of physical therapy of a low ball salary, you can go and work in a different setting that will pay you more. You can get a travel contract or work in the home health setting if that's gonna pay you more than outpatient. Now, is outpatient where you wanna be? Maybe, but if you really want to stay in physical therapy and low ball salaries are a con to you, well, you can fight that and have a solution to it by working in another setting and building up your capital, building up your money until you can go back and work wherever you want. So a new setting and a new location. The next, side hustles. We talked about that already, but if you have a nine to five job in physical therapy, that leaves you more room in your time to potentially do other things, especially if you're single and have no kids. I mean, let's go, let's go, let's put in that work, especially if money is important to you. If it's not, then you don't gotta worry about that, okay? 
Then lastly, you can change jobs is one of the best ways that you can get a higher salary or a better hourly pay. So if you stay at a job for two years and they're not budget and they're not budging with their salary, you can go somewhere else and get more money. Then stay there, then go somewhere else, then go somewhere else. That is a potential solution. Can that work for everyone? No, I understand, but it is a potential solution to a con if you still love the physical therapy profession, but are just concerned about some things that might bother you. Okay, so next, next, let's talk about COVID-19. So what are some potential solutions to COVID-19? That's above my pay grade, that's above my head. There are way smarter people talking about that than me, but basically my main point with this is to think about this. Now, can COVID-19 last forever and some, anything could happen, right? That's not the point. But my point is this, in two years, three years, five years, when you guys are done with physical therapy school and working, is COVID-19 really going to be around like it is now? It could be, but is it going to be? I don't know. In theory, it's probably not going to be as severe with as many lockdowns and uh, hurting the economy like it is now. So I just want you to keep that in mind. If you're thinking about physical therapy and you're like, man, this COVID-19 is shutting things down and all that stuff, what's gonna happen? Physical therapy is dead because of that. I mean, I do understand your concerns because people have been furloughed, people have been laid off, but in two, three, five years, is the market going to adjust and go back to being roar, a, a roaring physical therapy profession? Most likely. And I say that from experience because at the time of this video, where I work at this time, we just hired on a new person because we're so packed and we've been packed since the summertime from when COVID-19 started, you know, since the summertime until now, like we've been slim. So in my opinion, this profession ain't dying. <laughs> this is not going anywhere. Our clinic is packed. So that's just what I want you to think about with COVID-19. And the last point on this one is really this. Do we really think about this with other professions, right? So COVID-19 hasn't just affected physical therapy. It's affected everything. So let's zoom out a little bit and let's just think about, are we saying the same things about other professions that we are about physical therapy? Because other professions, right? Becoming a dentist, has that been affected by COVID-19? Right, exactly. But do we say that dentistry is a bad career? And de is dentistry dead because of COVID-19? Right? Air travel, pilots, is that a bad career? Is that dead because of COVID-19? Now, will it be affected for a while? Yes, but is it dead because of COVID-19? People are still traveling. What about sports, the NBA, MLB, MLS, NFL? Are those dead or aren't they just affected right now? And you can go on and on and on and on about other professions. Are they really dead or are they just effective and need to innovate at this moment in time? And the same goes for us. So if you're scared and saying physical therapy is dead because of COVID-19, yes, it is affected right now, but is it dead? Let's talk about it, okay? Then lastly, insurance changes. Now, insurance changes, a potential solution to this is really, well, before I get into that, I really need to preface it with this because insurance changes, Medicare cuts, all of that stuff has really been going on since before I even knew about physical therapy, since before you even knew about physical therapy. So that is nothing new. Like that has been going on forever and ever. So my question about this is, are we going to innovate around it? Because if that's been going on forever and might keep going on, how are we, what are we going to do? Are we going to attack it right on? Maybe potentially. And what I mean by that is maybe some people watching the video are really into politics and are going to get involved in the APTA, meaning the American Physical Therapy Association, and battle on Capitol Hill and be lobbyists for us and talk about unionizing the profession and all of that stuff. And that could tackle that problem of insurance cuts head on. But on the other end, can we potentially talk about this? Marketing our profession better. Meaning this, the problems 
that cause people to go to physical therapy are not going away. So when people bring up the, the question or discuss that physical therapy is dead, my question always is like, what do you mean? Because ankle sprains aren't going away, car accidents aren't going away, knee replacements aren't going away, strokes aren't going away. Everything that people need physical therapy for isn't going away. So the problems that people come to us for are not dead, but are us, the people in our profession, going to be the ones who are top of mind for those problems? Are you following me? I hope you're following me because this is what I mean. Can we be the main people that people think about when they have an ankle sprain or back pain saying, oh, I have an ankle sprain, let me go to physical therapy. Oh, my back hurts, let me go to physical therapy. Oh, my neck hurts, let me go to physical therapy. Or are they going to say, my neck hurts, let me go somewhere else. Let me take this pill. Let me do something else, let me do something else. And not think of physical therapy. How can we start and help the people who are helping us be top of mind? Can we help them bring more awareness to our profession so that we will not die? So that we will be top of mind? How innovative can we be? How good can we market our profession so that we will not die? because the problems that physical therapy fixes are not going away. But if we don't innovate like every other profession out there, we could die, maybe. Or we could change in a fashion that many people don't like is a more easy way to say it. So it's really about that. Or that's really what I like to bring up when people have this question. Is physical therapy dead? My question is, well, the problems to physical therapy or the problems that people come to physical therapists for are not going away. But what can we do to make sure that us as the solution to that problem don't go away? Hmm. So is physical therapy dead? At this moment in time, no. But are we going to be the ones to kill it or save it? and help save it is my question. You let me know. What are we gonna do? What are you gonna do? Let's discuss. So let me make sure I didn't miss anything because I have a tendency to ramble sometimes. But those are my main points. And the last thing, ooh, I'm glad I looked. Because for the pre-PTs watching this video, I'm talking to you right now. You ask all the time, how can I stand out? Well, if you were watching this video, you might need to watch it again because I dropped a lot of gems. So I hope you pick them up. Oh, what do I talk about? Oh, how do I stand out? Or how do I learn more about the profession? I just gave you a bunch of stuff to think, to talk about, to discuss with potential programs and faculty members out there. So how do you stand out? Nah, this is just one of many gems we drop all the time. So I hope you pick them up. So we can keep discussing. We're gonna keep having this conversation. We'll keep have li having live streams about it and going and going and going because this discussion needs to keep happening uh, to help improve our profession. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, share, tag your friends in it, share it out, discuss this amongst your pre-PT friends in your pre-PT club meetings, wherever. Let's keep having this discussion uh, so physical therapy does not die. So we'll catch you on the next video.